They often say that the most epic campsites are those hardest to get to, and Grizzly Lake is no exception. We return at the start of 2024 with a mission to camp at the dispersed site that is at the end of this 8 out of 10 trail. A campsite that in my opinion is one of the most amazing in the entire state. However, we have to make it there first. A large gatekeeper, dangerous and boulder filled shelf road, plus holiday traffic all stand in our way. If we make it, we will be bringing you guys to the single most amazing alpine campground in the state of Colorado that we have stayed at to date. We have roughly 160 miles to where we'll be camping for the night. It's July 2nd and we are headed out early to stage just down the trailhead from Grizzly Lake in hopes to be the first on the trail in the morning. The trail that we have chosen to camp off is just at the end of Old Chalk Road when you enter St. Elmo Ghost Town. It is one that is very special to Sam and I and one we complete every year. However, this year it's snowed in, so we've got kind of a new plan. Pinka Pass was Sam and I's first mountain pass that we had done together in a Jeep that we built together. It holds a special place in our hearts and getting the camp off of it for our third annual wheel anniversary is going to be epic. Work together. What'd you air down to? 15. We're just airing down for comfort. I'll probably go down lower for Grizzly. We're probably only gonna go maybe another mile. Ask me what the most underrated area in Colorado was, I would have to say this is it. From the alpine views that are something out of a movie to the abundance of history within this area, the Sawatch Mountain Range holds enough stories to keep a man talking for the rest of his life. We are headed up the pass now, and if you didn't know, this mountain pass was named after famous mining pioneer Jim Taylor, who originally found gold here in 1860 proclaiming his find and proudly displaying it in his tin cup to the rest of the camp. By 1881, a full road was built over the 12,154 foot mountain pass, allowing engineers to transport materials and goods between the town of Tin Cup and St. Elmo. All right, so we're getting positioned in our camp at the bottom of Tin Cup for tonight. It's a little chilly. I had to throw on a sweater. Um, the water's freezing. It's rushing right now. It's definitely really high. So that's a good indication that Mirror Lake is also, as Cora said, really high. This is one epic campsite for sure. We're going to camp up there. We'll set up our tent. We're going to put Kiana right there. And then Max is in his truck right there. We actually made it here pretty good on time. Yeah. Sun's still going down, so why don't we take advantage of that and get the tent up? Yep. We have just crawled into bed. What time is it? 10.30. 10.30 at night. We're getting up super early, actually a little before sunrise tomorrow to get everything pulled down. And we're gonna immediately hop over to Grizzly and hopefully get an opportunity to camp at the gorgeous lake at the top of Grizzly. So it's gonna be an awesome day of battling and rock landing to get to where we need to be. But for tonight, we're gonna to curl up. We got the heater going. Um, it's not bad, I think. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's definitely not bad. We're just getting comfy and we got our sleeping bags, so. We should have a pretty toasty night tonight, and then we'll see what it's like at 11,100 feet tomorrow. The next morning brought one of the most spectacular sunrises, coupled with some amazing views of the camp we had chosen. Both made for a pretty amazing morning, despite the early wake-up time we had.
Good morning, guys. It is about 5.45 in the morning. We just got camp all pulled down. Super chilly night last night. It was 35 degrees. So we did have to kick on the buddy heater to stay nice and comfy, but that kept it super warm inside our tent. So it was a pretty comfy night overall. Right now it's sitting about 35 degrees this morning and it's got a good little chill. No wind, an amazing Buena Vista sunrise coming up. So camp was super epic last night. We're alive. It got a little chilly. This super epic camp spot uh, right next to the river. All right, so we're on the trail. The sun is so bright this morning, it's crazy. The sunrise is still coming up. It's July 3rd. So far, there's not a lot of people. Oh, we got some bad rubbing going on with the 37s and the sliders. So that's definitely gonna play a factor into today. We got a lot of big flexing today. Yeah. So hopefully Gremlin holds up. We just completed doing our uh, Hard Rock Dana 44 front axle swap and we switched over to adjustable control arm links. We think we did everything right. We're not mechanics though. So let's keep our fingers crossed that the Jeep stays together and we make it where we're going and it should be a pretty fun day. All right, so we have made it to the trailhead of Grizzly Lake. We actually have a video prior on this uh, trail, so if you haven't seen it, go check that one out. It was my first time conquering Grizzly Lake. But this trail is known to many as very intimidating because it's gatekeeper. We'll show you that in a sec, but the other thing you're gonna see at Grizzly Lake if you come out here is a information board and a very fancy one. It's going to give you all sorts of information and I would heavily suggest checking it out because it is going to point out a lot of different things. Number one, it's going to point out what obstacles and the route you got to take, giving you a little bit of imagery of what you're up against here. And then it's also going to give you a list here of what you should have if you're going to attempt this trail. Now guys, by no means are our Grizzly Lake easy overlanding trails. Now we're up against a gatekeeper here at Grizzly Lake and we're anticipating this might take a minute and be a little bit of a battle. Let's go check out what that looks like. We have made it up the gatekeeper of Grizzly Lake. Yes, and now we got the shelf road ahead and everything chills out and we got some awesome views to show you guys. Uh, we did have to tug Max up, but I mean, overall, we all thought he was gonna make it first try. So 
He's on 35s in a Tacoma, and we're on 37s in a JKU. And he's not front locked, but he's rear locked. We're not rear locked, but we're front locked. So, kind of gives you a good look of what that gatekeeper has for the 2024 year. Um, we're gonna get up here, and we're actually going to get the drone up for you. So, yeah, see you in the sky. This is Grizzly Lake's main shelf road and what we consider to be second of three major obstacles. The shelf is littered with numerous large sized boulders and has an impressive elevation climb to it. Just to your right drops a few couple hundred feet and the shelf leads you right into your third and final large obstacle at the top. The views from this shelf however are purely incredible and the creek below roars throughout the mountain valley walls as you slowly crawl your way up the 500 feet in elevation in just under 1000 yards. We have reached the top of the shelf road, but our battle's not over yet. Yep, right there. We are now face to face with the last major obstacle that stands before us and our road to paradise. A very dug out and twisty section that will put your builds flex to the test for sure. Camera does not hardly do most of the beginning of Grizzly Lake justice, especially in this section, as it can easily twist you up into an uncomfortable spot. You're back. There you go. Now come passenger. There you go. We have survived the shelf. I mean, we're still on the shelf, but... The hard part of the shelf. Yes. And now we're headed to apparently a trails off-road waypoint, a uh, dangerous tippy road. Um, we actually crashed drone, so we're not sure if that still works or not. We did go down and find it. That was miserable. Um, <laughs> but don't worry, we got plans to get a better drone here real soon. Uh, we're just taking care of issues like what's going on with Gremlin now that we've discovered is uh, Our track bar mount is slamming into our frame because we don't got enough lift to separate them so We're gonna have to go up a little bit and lift but we're gonna have to ride out the trip like this and it's just gonna be really slow and We're gonna have to keep it fluid. We also discovered that our drag link because of the lift is coming in contact with our steering stabilizer so we really do not got that much uh turning radius to the driver's side which is terrible yeah but regardless we made it up the gatekeeper we made it up the shelf without pulling cable on 37s just to give you an idea of how big these obstacles actually are and that shelf is not forgiving no you, you no, send yourself not. toppling off that side, it's going to be a really bad day. Yeah. So, uh, it's better on this trail, play it safe than sorry. And if you're not capable, just stay away from it. I would say a Jeep with 37s in 2024 is more than capable of doing it. Just make sure you have the right gear and a buddy.
This area is completely surrounded by 13,000 foot mountain peaks on each side, creating a valley that looks like something out of a fairy tale. Originally named Forest City, the St. Elmo Ghost Town has been home to over 50 major Colorado mines, with many early pioneer families calling these very valleys home. At its peak, the St. Elmo area had over 2,000 residents, all workers of the mines perched along the trails we enjoy today. St. Elmo has 43 buildings and is known as one of the best preserved ghost towns in America today. And the ruins of the old pioneers' cabins follow suit and are a great reminder as to why it's important to tread lightly and ensure that this history is around for many more generations to come enjoy. Ultimately, this area saw its demise when the train service was discontinued in 1926 up Old Chalk Road. Not long after, the residents began to move on to more accommodated areas, and these mountain valleys were once again empty. This mud hole is here pretty much all the time and is probably my least favorite spot on this entire trail. Not because it's a hard mud hole or it's super deep and intimidating, but mainly because people are pulling these logs into the mud hole for whatever reason. And I am afraid that it's gonna end up in a rig's undercarriage or suspension. So just make sure to come through here with caution and know that there could be a log hiding under the water, so check first. Alright, we are just coming into the basin that has Grizzly Lake itself and we don't see a soul. So, looks like we will be camping here tonight. It's going to be a cold night, not going to lie, but it's going to be so worth it. These views are incredible. We have made it to camp, what do you think? Uh, it's pretty awesome. The wildlife is not out like it was last time we were here, but it's pretty early, pretty chilly in the season. So it is this same epic campsite that we were hoping to get. And we're here super early. We're gonna take kind of a leisure day and relax a little bit and then kick off with more adventure tomorrow. But let's, uh, let's show you Grizzly Lake.
All right, good morning. It is, what time is it? Like 8.15. Like 8.15. And it's 39 degrees out. It was a super cold night on Grizzly Lake, but we made it through the night. The sun's coming up now, and we're gonna make our way out of here for the day. We gotta get to St. Elmo to pick up Max's mom. In the beginning of the video, we made mention about how we are having clearance issues. But sadly, by the end of Grizzly Lake, those issues had become so severe that our frame rail was a mere inch from our axle at ride height. We had made the decision to call the trip at camp to be better safe than sorry, and began our trek back down. Despite our mechanical issues, we still had to negotiate our way out of Grizzly Lake without breaking anything more, and meet Colleen in St. Elmo to let her know what's going on. But if you made it this far in the video, I hope you give it a like and consider helping the channel out by giving us a subscribe as well. We'd really appreciate it and it would help us out a ton. Thank you for riding with us on another crazy adventure and I hope to see you guys on another. Good job, baby. 